today is May 10th, 2022. Uh, just under a year ago, I started teaching myself Japanese, or started learning Japanese. By the end of the summer, I could comfortably read and write with hiragana and katakana, and I felt like I was at a good place to start with. And eventually I found Wani Kani and started teaching myself a bunch of kanji and vocabulary words. I found Boonpro, but something happened along the way. I don't know what it was. I don't know what happened. It is just under a year out and I know a couple basic sentences, only on level 11. I started, things just fell off continuously and I don't know. I've now recently injured myself and so I'm questioning my whole identity in a sense. Because the US doesn't offer any JLPT exams in the summer, I decided I'm gonna take a self-assessment on July 3rd, which is the JLPT exam date for N5. That's my goal. <laughs> uh, my goal is to pass. Uh, on my own assessment, maybe take N4 later on. Very frustrated with myself. Mental health recently has not been great at all. I am gonna go today after my meetings and make a plan. Not too much of one because planning is essential, but plans themselves are useless as I like to reiterate. I found this article or Reddit thread about someone who did so much Japanese in two years. And I don't wanna do it at that pace because I don't, I think I'll burn out and I don't wanna be doing this again in a year. I'm not sure how much I want to dig into immersion techniques, but I think I was approaching things wrong and I'm going to use that person's history, learn from it how I can, try and slowly transform the amount of media I consume into purely Japanese media. If you don't know me already, my name is Mark. Right now I'm a technical consultant looking to go software engineer. Uh, I've got a degree in linguistics, language in mind, but I pretty much did linguistics. Super fascinated in semantics and syntax. And uh, I do want to teach English in Japan one day. I want to make sure I can say I will be teaching English in Japan in a year and not one day. I don't want to someday myself out of a life. So this vlog will end with me taking my N5 self-assessment on July 3rd. Yeah. All right, so yesterday I finished writing just some pretty brief goals, uh, N5 exam on July 3rd, and then some stuff for Take Him, uh, reading that within oh, 10 days or so. Goal is to finish chapter three basic grammar by the end of the day. Pretty much rereading, but this time not trying to take notes, not trying to memorize explicitly, just getting the big picture overview. And it's great going through this and thinking, oh, I don't know what that kanji is, but if it's translated to who, it must be dare. You know, I have learned stuff and that's, that's comforting to know. I went ahead and set Japanese study for every morning. I'm a little late today. Poor, slept poorly with my shoulder, considering an excuse. Got some interviews going on, so we'll see how far I get. For the morning, it'll be a reading take him and getting the reviews down. I'm starting, and uh, it's the most I can ask for. Something to be said for wanting to set this really high pace. One of my favorite rules is Parkinson's Law, and I just constantly ignore it, and that is work will expand to fill the time that you give it. So if you tell yourself you're gonna read a chapter in a week, you're gonna read like two pages on the first day and then you'll probably cram to the end. That's the way it is with procrastination. And I'm just trying to stop that. Look at that, still May 11th, 8.58 p.m. We have 495 reviews on Wani Kani with some lessons. I want that to be zero before midnight. And then I'm gonna sit down right now and finish Basic grammar, I take him. Last time I set out to do that, I wanted to take a week, and now I've done it in about two days. May 12th, we're moving on to chapter five. Chapter five is a beefy boy. Uh, I told myself it's just over 100 pages, I'd read it in two days. And then I was like, ooh, I should give myself an extra day, and then I thought, no, that's antithetical to what I was saying. And now, because I want to, I'm re-watching Hori Mia. Uh, no subtitles, though. It's one of my favorites. I watched it for the first time a while ago. Only without subtitles will you realize how much you actually know, and you might be surprised. So turn off subtitles, give it a shot. So I just uh, reset my old Boom Pro account. I'm gonna go through, and I'm effectively gonna select a whole bunch of these starters, and do like five a day, I think. I need to remember that these things build off of each other and that's something to keep in mind. There are things that work in parallel, but anyway, gonna select a bunch of these so I can restart as, and I think in the long term, it'll be better for me and take not nearly as long. Hey, Wani Kani's down to 96 reviews, 42 lessons, and Boom Pro is, it's, you know, we're, we're doing it. I think the these little video updates are probably gonna stop for a minute. I've got my phone and I got NHK, which are like Japanese news, artic news articles. I just want this to become a part of my daily routine. Go 400%, and I'll lose it again if I only do like 50%. Okay, so it is 10.20 in the morning. I stand up in 10 minutes, but um, Boon Pro, hola! The reviews are done, seven minutes for 13. I found this really cool chart right here, and I think for, for the Boon Pro reviews for a while, the thing that's tripping me up is, for example, transitive and transitive verbs. Thanks. I know what they are. 
pretty, pretty well. But the conjugations for the verbs themselves always trip me up. And when you get it wrong, the lesson doesn't shed light on the conjugation. So I think for a while, I'm gonna have this chart open for me. I know in high school and stuff when I was learning French, I'd memorize all the forms for ER verbs, IR, UR, RE, -R -E. I don't think UR is a thing, Never mind. Point is, there are some special verbs in here and this chart's really good. I'm gonna find another one for polite. I realized just now that I was being tripped up by the fact that you convert to negation or the past tense and then polite form as opposed to thinking polite form and then the negation of the past tense. Technically there's no difference if you think about it, but I'm gonna crunch out a few only Connie reviews as much as I can before stand up and then hop back into it. Boon Pro's going really well. I'm gonna finish essential grammar today. Yes, I'm three days behind. No, I don't feel too bad about it, but today I'm, I'm it feels like an empty day where I'm not totally down the dumps, but I'm not totally motivated. And so I'm gonna really be pushing myself today. I feel like I'm, I'm back on the saddle, at least for, for a little bit. Also, the JLPT N5 review book I figured out is just a practice exam. That's it's straight up just a practice exam. So that'll be what I do on July 3rd and I'll have to figure something else out. We're back, I had my stand up, my hair is messy. I got a shave, but look, Boon Pro, zero with reviews coming up. And even better, Wani Kani, zero with manageable reviews. Enough of me projecting to the future. All right, according to my little list up there, I want to finish the essential grammar section on May 13th and the whole book on May 17th. It is currently May 17th and I've just finished the essential grammar section. It is 9.54 in the morning. First morning where I actually successfully did my hour review. I think reading through the grammar guide was the best tip I inadvertently got from that Google doc. I'm not gonna hold it against myself that I didn't finish it. It's one of those things where, you know, when you're reading a book as well, you think, oh, I'm gonna, you know, read five chapters today and you just, you just gotta crack at it small. Even if you don't have time to sit down for five chapters, just read a few pages and over time those few pages add up. It's a hard lesson to understand. I don't think I've learned it yet, but it is what it is. I do need to start reading, even though speaking and listening will be a weak point. I'm actually becoming pretty good with the kanji. It's, I have about 33 minutes until my morning stand up. I'm gonna go watch some anime. I finished the essential grammar section in, I guess, five days. <laughs> When it previously, uh, it's just, it's insane what can happen when you put your mind to something and you actually give yourself a reasonable deadline. May 19th, I've signed a job offer that's kind of irrelevant. I'm going over Boon Pro, some more, more lessons, doing four right now. Something I realized, and this kind of threw me off with Boon Pro the first time, quite frankly. When you are learning things, everything bases itself off of a different set of learning blocks, if you will, worth keeping in mind. All right, still May 19th. Why am I so zoomed in? Whoa, what? All right, so 20 minutes ago, I had 44 lessons and boom, zero, probably blurry. Also, 20 of 36 kanji are passed, what? It's pretty hype. This is mostly a reminder to me, but also anyone out there looking to memorize kanji, use the pictographic aspect of these iconographs to your advantage. Create an image, you know, the harbor. Oh, it's me not though well. If I'm on the harbor, me nautical. It's stupid, but that's the best kind of, you know, that's the best kind of mnemonic. I think this yesterday I was at one kanji of 36, and now I'm at 20. All right, May 22nd. So I'm going over uh, some Boom Pro lessons. Right now I'm doing five a day. This video is gonna be N5 in three months. In theory, I've had exposure for a year. I think if you consider reading, writing, taking me a year, you could have gotten to my kanji level in a month. And having that basis of vocab while tackling grammar is really important. I wanted to mention that I'm watching essay of the Alicization arc. Fully in Japanese, no subtitles at all, Netflix doesn't have them. Something that bugged me, and I find that it doesn't bug me anymore, is the fact that the fact that I don't know what's happening isn't as important. I'm starting to find more value in exposure to language and hearing, and I'm getting better at segmenting. So hearing words being said, and then there's a chunk of sounds that follow it and I think, okay, that's a grammar point, I don't know. So that's actually been super, super fun to experience. I'm hoping that by the time I reach the end of the Alicization arc, which will, you know, maybe happen after I take my little N5 assessment, I'll actually be able to understand a lot more and so it'll be something to reflect on. I have not finished Take Him, I haven't actually picked it up since I finished Essential Grammar because I felt content with how I'm going with Boon Pro and Wani Kani, but I, I, I am definitely behind there. I think I'll just at least skim the two sections, so by the next update, I and have those figured out. And then I'm gonna, I gotta get to reading short stories. Finishing up the review session, I got 80% by the way. Having no lessons, finishing the reviews, coming back, and seeing that you leveled up. Because it's great and all. You're like, oh my god, I leveled up. But then you see 75 lessons, and I click on this, I click start session. 17 radicals, 21 kanji, and 37 vocab words. It just all hits you at once. 
So it's May 22nd, and I want to finish this in seven days, plus minus two. There's a bunch of kanji unlocked, and then there's a whole bunch that I have yet to unlock. Five minutes later, finished it. Lessons now from 75 to 51. Radicals are done. Not gonna do the kanji quite yet. There are 20 to do. Gonna do some boom pro and then finish a weathering with you and then uh, call it a night. May 23rd, I look weird, but two minutes still stand up, so I gotta make this quick. Two observations. One, I just finished boom pro and wanna kind this morning. Felt great. I'm gonna do the wanna kind lessons today, get them out of the way. Uh, feel good about it. Frick, I already forgot my realization. I think a great metaphor is Sisyphus rolling the boulder up a hill. Every time you start a new level, the boulder rolls right back down. So, <sighs> finish the lessons and reviews. Tomorrow at 2 a.m. So there's a, there's gonna be 18 reviews that trigger at, at 11 p.m. I have I have both zeros. Okay, shush. <laughs> On Sunday I'll get 666. Hard to do nothing until then. Nice. These things really stack up, and then you have a breath of fresh air, and then you level up. It's like whoops, like already. So uh, finally sat down, got to take him. I'm like halfway through the special expressions. It's not very long, and I'm definitely skimming it. I think a lot of the honorific stuff. I have a generic understanding of how honorifics work in a sense a lot of from from what I did in, in for my linguistics degree effectively this goes into a lot more depth and the depth is kind of specific to like conjugation rules and all that and so I think it's important to have an understanding you know go into what happens unintentionally and all this but I just I do want to just say yes I I finished you know reading <laughs> take him not taking notes that's the idea I read the first part pretty pretty in depth but now I'm just skimming listening to TV shows doing boon prone wani kani if you encapsulate yourself too too much you start to think I know everything and as you get better at your reviews you start to think wow I'm getting pretty good at this and then all of a sudden you watch a TV show and you understand five percent of it but you want to avoid popping your bubble, which can be nice sometimes, but you don't, you know, you don't want it to be too abrupt. You know, I finished writing and all of a sudden Japanese didn't become so foreign to me. And that was a good thing until it was destructive to my, to my progress learning more. Cause I was like, okay, I've learned a lot. In, in other words, I've come a few miles, but I have a million more miles to go. Onwards and upwards, May 30. I need to shave hundred percent. So I finally, uh, I've been doing pretty well with watching anime and stuff. I'm about to hop on Boom Pro and kill these 47 reviews that are pending and throw on a five to 10 more rules. I haven't been doing five every day. I've decided that I'm gonna do five to 10 that I find are kind of similar. So I'm 72 out of 126 now. And hopefully by like the end of first week of June, I'll be done. But putting those new ones in with the ones I'm good at, like the ones that are still cycling, just get those out of the way quickly. June 13th, I said I'd crack open the N5 prep book, but uh, because it's pretty much a practice exam and it's gonna be the one I take, on June 13th, I'm gonna start finding online prep materials instead. Vocab should be totally taken care of. The grammar points are going well. It's just like, I'm slowly realizing that I can, I can, uh, read and say things. I wanted to crack open this. It just hit me that maybe I should sit down and say, you know what? I've been making good progress. I should take a serious look at these. And I've discovered something kind of troubling. Wani Kani is great. I've loved it. Yeah, you can find it all online, but they put it together for you and they, they pace you and great. The problem is they don't quiz you from English to Japanese, which is not a problem, but they also don't quiz you about the hiragana to kanji which is not not a problem because you don't it's not that bad when i see the kanji for rain we'll put it up on screen i think okay the vocab word at least is pronounced ame the problem with that is for more complex vocab words senjo the word i'm thinking of is battlefield those two together are senjo or battlefield both of those sounds are used over again for other kanji this Test book. Question one. Ashita wa ame desu ka? I didn't notice this on question one, but it's as for tomorrow, is it going to rain? The kanji for rain is underlined and the options are different pronunciations and I would circle four. But then number two comes around and it says kyoshitsu de and I think de is a particle. What is kyoshitsu? I know kyo can be many things and I know shitsu can be many things and I'm pretty sure I know a word that is pronounced kyoshitsu so we're gonna check this live well like I know that a word is pronounced kyoshitsu but I don't know what that word is the problem here is that I'm too reliant on kanji all of a sudden okay this is a perfect example god damn could mean company it could mean car it could mean person sha is the pronunciation for nine different kanji we add sheen on there. I will take this and pay more attention when I'm writing out vocab words. I think it would also be useful to see hiragana and then be like, oh, ame or anki, that's, you know, rain. Or memorization, these specific kanji respectively. That's just a small, scary update. I think the real horror here is realizing that kanji is actually useful. 
Okay, in the last 20 seconds, I decided that paying more attention during Wanikani will not cut it. I will do that, and I will also pay attention to Boom Pro, but I'm gonna go ahead and find an Anki deck to just crunch specifically M5 vocabulary for like the, the week before or two weeks before. I think there's a lot to say about studying specifically for an exam, but we'll save that for another clip. so badly. Going through the end of the My Hero Academia, right at the end there, it's got a Ishio Kan Go, which is one week after, so one week later. Quick update, I'm doing Wani Kani, <laughs> and I just had a moment where determination, Keshin, came up on my reviews, and I went to this next word, which I got wrong, I know, but then I thought, and it took me a solid like two seconds to remember, this hiragana thing in no kanji is bad. I'm glad I, I, I'm glad I caught it now. <laughs> I am disappointed in myself, uh, 61%. There are way too many words, and this is not a problem with Wani Kani or Japanese, this is something I'm observing. There are so many words that are so similar. So if I go back to the homepage, 35 lessons, 31 of 34 kanji passed, great. So I was thinking I can go through and solidify mnemonics, but there are, like, even just body and road, I'm confusing, <laughs> which is weird, but a great one is uh, to move which no leader, which is on here, and to work. They look so similar, throw them up. And it, it's June 3rd, and I've just hit level 14, let's go! This level looks kinda hype. There are six radical, 32 kanji, which is less than usual. I was very surprised at this. I don't know how I passed three kanji that were awaiting review, but oh, literally 29 kanji mark. How did I count 15? I never noticed this. You only need to pass 29 kanji of the 32 presented in this level. Anyway, there are 81 lessons I have to get through. You know what? It's okay. It's okay. I'm gonna do these today. And I decided Boon Pro would be 10 to 12 new Boon Pro lessons every three days. So, yeah. The reviews continue. I need to shave still. Freaking, I had a hiragana katakana moment. Uh, there's a grammar point on Boon Pro. I literally just looked at this. It's before or in front of. Uh, ma e ni, uh, ma e ni, and then you hover over it gives you the kanji. That's the kanji for in front of. As soon as I saw it, I was like, I know exactly what this is now. And it's frustrating because I like looking at ma e ni and then the kanji ma e ni, it's just, ah, uh, it's different in my brain and I don't like it. I still gotta find those vocab cards in the list for today. I don't know if I'll have time, but, uh, frick, June 3rd. June 5th, less than a month. 40 more Boom Pro points to go. I'm doing about 10 every three days. This week I, I have a lot more time though, so I'll probably spend more time doing it. How do people find the right kanji consistently? I don't get it. Oh, I'm holding the camera with my right arm, let's go. This is a win. Ow, oh, it hurts. I have now officially downloaded two Anki decks, one of which is 2,756 cards, the other is 654 cards. <laughs> I've been met with a few M5 words now that I have never heard of. And the hiragana dilemma that I've just mentioned in this video is ever present. Uh, and I looked them up on Jisho Kanji. I'm like, oh, is this really N5? And it says it's N5. And I'm gonna trust the Jisho Kanji thing. I think for right now, Anki, for studying specifically for this exam, is going to be my best bet. I have a lot of experience with that in computer science, you know, studying for an algorithms exam versus making a, a web app or something. They're totally different. I'm not great at studying, but I do know how to prepare for an exam whose requirements are specifically laid out. So I found those two Anki decks, I'm gonna be using those alongside Boon Kani, I guess. Keep doing Boon Pro. I think Boon Pro is still going to be incredibly key and helpful. Just don't go into the N4 stuff yet. N4. Oh. This also will be helpful in terms of actually studying for the N3 that I want to take in December. I don't know if I mentioned that, but I've decided that I think it would be great to take the N3 because it might be easier to get a slot for that one and whatever. I'll see if I can find practice questions online and just like, start looking over those every day because I want to start gearing towards studying specifically for the exam. That is going to be key in these last two or so weeks. I made a, not really rash, but I made a decision, decided, as we know at least, this is going to be the, the exam that I take and I'm going to score myself. I just ordered a book of three mock exams from Amazon. Very hard to find mock exams online. I don't know why or if I'm looking for the wrong things or doing it wrong, but I found a list of all the vocab that matches up with the Anki deck that I have. I found a grammar list so I can make sure that Boon Pro is one-to-one. -one. I don't get caught by any surprises. So slowing down on Wani Kani, definitely gonna happen. Yeah, I don't know, it's not unbearable, it just takes up time. And I guess more mental energy than anything. The over-reliance on kanji is actually really scary. Uh, I saw Kinoa on the, the little PDF I was looking at and I was like, I know what Kinoa is. 
and it's yesterday, and so I should definitely be able to identify that without thinking about it. We got the plan set. I think it's it's time to hone in on the N5 specific things. In other words, I'm no longer going to be rushing to get Wani Kani lessons done, done, done. I think I'll resume that, you know, after I take this exam, take the N4 in like September, and then just spend a whole two months prepping for N3 in December. And hopefully that one I can actually take as an official exam. So yeah. I'm watching this video from Takashi from Japan. Uh, it's how did you pass a JLPT N1. Um, and he interviews, I'm on person three, so I guess three people. I don't know, I have some thoughts. Studying for something as advanced as the JLPT N1 or N2 is not going to directly translate to conversation. Something I'm really scared of is passing the N3 and then never using Japanese and then losing it. I don't know if I'll set a goal to one day pass N1, so it's important for me to get ingrained in communities and stuff. Uh, effectively, if I can go through the Boon Pro N5 grammar, N3 grammar, N1 grammar, and go through Wani Kani's vocab, these things alone will not get me to fluency, and I have no illusion that they will. I believe that as an adult, having language faculty and cognitive processing abilities, it's important to know that oh, this particle can be used for multiple different things. Um, they're sequent, like tangentially related, whether ga is a subject particle or a formal version for an, uh, the or conjunction, then you can kind of, I don't know, think about them and then you can listen for them. And that's uh, just listening to these people speak, I'm picking up on things like, oh, there's just this, this uh, key difference of having conversation uh, you know, the applicable scenario and the exam. And so I need to be very careful going forward, as I've sort of already learned with the hiragana debacle. I'm gonna study for the N5 exam and then take it, you know, see how I do, but I wanna make sure I engage myself in conversation. Joining to Japanese Discord servers, you can study for an exam, it can cert like that curriculum, that syllabus, if you will, you know, what the N5 grammar points and vocab are, are a perfect foundation. Becoming aware of the basic particles, the basic conjunctions, and then taking that, practicing it, and applying it, and making it real. From here on out, I'm gonna go back and forth. N5, really apply it. Slowly do Wani Kani and Boom Pro N2. You know, do that, and then focus on studying for that exam take that foundation, build on it, give myself more grammar points, more particles that I might pick up when I'm speaking in conversation in general. And at the end of the day, you just, you don't wanna be locked in. If you become locked into one way of thinking, one way of speaking, long term, it's gonna be bad. Um, Cause if I've learned anything, even just doing Boon Prone Wani Kani and watching TV, that's not enough to do the N5. Yeah, 20 more Boon Pro points. I, I do, I feel optimistic I, I can do them today, but I have a video to edit. I'm gonna be moving and doing a lot of crap uh, in the next five weeks, pretty much, so here we go. June 14th in Massachusetts. Uh, room's a mess, moving to Seattle, whatnot. Finished the, uh, finally, took me like, how long? 17 minutes, uh, finishing the, the special expressions part of Take Him. Right now, I, I need to put something together to get verb stems down and stuff. I realize one of my biggest weaknesses with Boon Pro is just really committing to memory. The simplest conjugation rules, because everything, quite logically, for now at least, builds off of each other. Still working hard at it, still looking to take the N5 on July 3rd. I had a small epiphany about the hiragana debacle. I realized that when I look at the kanji, a lot of the times I reverse engineer the sound, which probably doesn't make all that much sense, but I just had one that was like passion, warm feeling. The first kanji is feeling, which is jyo. And then the second one is heat, which is netsu. And I just wrote down jyo netsu because I looked at the two kanji and it was like, oh, I don't have a memory mnemonic, therefore it's this pronunciation. So if I see jyo netsu in the future, it's that's maybe why it's so much harder to go from the hiragana to what it means versus seeing the kanji and knowing. Just a thought. A thought. All right, it is still June 18th. I just finished all the Boon Pro N5. Woo, 126 out of 126. Some of them are based on N4 grammar, so I'm a little scared. 66 reviews on Boon Pro right now. 197 on Wani Kani. Still getting those down. Want to get a Wani Kani to zero and Boon Pro to zero before I leave for my flight, otherwise tomorrow's going to be a nightmare. I got an N5 Quizlet thing, and it's great because it shows the the hiragana and the kanji on the on the side. So hopefully I can uh -oh, chair. <laughs> Isogashi. Oh, don't know that kanji. Yeah, well, this is gonna be good. And then I also have a list of N5 grammar points, so in case Boon Pro doesn't have anything, there shouldn't be something that takes me by surprise, in theory. 
Sin yeah, so this is, I don't know, a little more concrete, I think. Some quantifiers, some things Boom Pro doesn't have, I guess. And then a mini sample of the M5 practice, so like what the exam itself is kind of like. I'm, and I'm gonna be referencing this as like, okay, I fully understand what this is asking me. So just that sample and that'll be my, my reference. I'm gonna try to find more mock exams. I found a simulation online. These next two weeks, we'll be specifically studying for N5. And in 15 days, I will self-assess myself with N5. Kind of terrifying because I feel so underprepared and I need to throw in reading just to get used to reading, right? So I'm gonna put Wani Kani on vacation mode tomorrow when I get to zero reviews because this two week is gonna be grind time. I think my thoughts on immersion gonna have a whole series of videos. I'm, I'm starting to realize what people are saying about immersion. It's kind of like when people say, oh, you gotta enjoy the process. You can't really know what that means until you experience what it means to enjoy the process. Something I, you know, talked about in my recent parkour video. So when people are saying, like listening and reading are the most important things. I've disagreed for so long and I don't disagree anymore. I don't totally agree. Again, I think I have bias as uh, someone who is so intrigued by semantics and syntax. You need to create a foundation. So Boon Pro and Wani Kani, that's what this is doing for me right now. When you're studying for a specific exam, in this case, N5, N4, N1, whatever, you're creating a foundation of certain grammar points. Because once you have that foundation, that context to learn, then reading and listening become the most important things for you. It's so important to just listen and watch Japanese because as I'm noticing so much more lately, especially as I learn more grammar, I hear dakara, I hear i desu ne, desu ganbateru. You know, I hear the te form of verbs so often. Japanese is becoming segmented in my head. All the listening ends up adding up. Your brain will start to adjust, but you know, there is a lot of unconscious learning happening, but I don't think you can just immerse you have to create a foundation for yourself do what you like mix it in with the hard work and so i think for you know for me now n5 i have to do the flashcards for vocab and the grammar points that's what the test is like but i have to read books i downloaded some some like really easy picture books and stuff to practice reading going through visual novels really picking that up if you will It's uh, June, July 2nd. I'm supposed to take the exam tomorrow. It's 11.20 p.m. I think I'm gonna take it Thursday. Uh, I'm just going through these words. There's so many I don't know. It's very worrisome. I found the online simulated exam. I'm still taking it this week. If I fail, I fail. But yeah, I'm gonna just binge vocab. And the Boon programmer is going well. So hopefully the grammar points are good. I did go through a list. And definitely, definitely seemed okay. Bro, I don't... I'm so sorry. Cram setting tomorrow. Maybe take it Monday, Tuesday. Just this vocab thing and the reading. 5.32 p.m on Sunday, July 3rd. It still looks like I've got a red dot on my forehead. I took the N5 <laughs> simulation. <laughs> it didn't feel like a good, well, well, well. I have the email right in front of me, unopened. The three sections, the listening at the end, I feel like went the best, surprisingly well, and just how much I just heard, which is, it draws an interesting parallel with recognizing phrases by sound versus reading them and pronouncing them out loud in my head. Reading's definitely slow, but probably at an okay pace. Definitely a drop in vocab issues, and I think recognizing particles when they're there. The reading comprehension, I wasn't sure what it was asking me, so I need to go through that PDF again, but you can see your results following this link. <laughs> this is not gonna go well, is it? Selfish way of going about seeing things, but yikes, that's red. What? what? <laughs> Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 that ain't right. On the first language knowledge section, I got 66 out of 120, just above a 50%. On the listening, I got a 33 out of 60. Total score for 99 out of 180. Despicable. You only need a 50% to pass. N5 requires at least a 19 out of 60 in each section and a 45 percent in overall and i got a 50 percent what so technically i'm n5 proficient i don't like that i'm gonna keep studying i want to get an 80 percent or higher it's you know random chance would have given me a 25 percent right so i guess i you know i did better in that sense <laughs> i'm gonna <laughs> study i'm gonna cram vocab and do like a bunch of boom pro grammar crams this week the graph's looking pretty good i'm not gonna lie Look at that sweet graph. Look at this graph. Well, technically I passed the N5, so that's cool. But most of all, I didn't like how I felt during it. So <laughs> that's very awkward. My goal is like N4 by end of September so that I can be N3 in December. Anyway, that's it for now. My next update should be when I take the actual practice. That's so dumb. <laughs>
for the next exams I take, I'll do the self-study. I'll do this for the N4 again, and then I'll, you know, go for the N3. Once I hit N3, I'll focus on linguistics of Japanese. You know, hopefully I'll have enough knowledge, working knowledge and stuff. When I took the simulation, I was lying on my bed using my work laptop and just like blah. And I feel a little better now, so yeah, I had to dig up my DVD, my DVD drive, wherever that is. As I come into focus, I just want to briefly mention this notion that I think is important. Oh my god, can you please? Becoming fluent in a language is something that is very far away. And you know, even with English, I struggle in, in, in ways. Everyone struggles with every language, right? And there's always dialectal differences, and there's no perfect language. You might be studying one dialect, but anyway, yada yada. Point is, fluency is a goal that you shouldn't focus on, in my opinion. You should you should learn to speak it to represent your own your own thoughts. I don't think language is thought. That's another story. One thing is that I've heard before, I guess, is just getting used to a language. You don't ever truly learn the ins and outs of language. A native speaker can't teach you about the theta roles of their language and why a subject can be dropped in a zero pronoun you use in Japanese, but not English, yada yada. I think that all these past forms for conjugating verbs, you have to commit this to memory at the start. In, in my, again, this is my opinion. The more you use them, the more you get used to them. What I predict I'll see is that, you know, I'll start with, okay, tatsu, it's tsu, so it's gonna be a ta to end it. And over time, I hope that it becomes less of, oh, it ends with this, and more, oh, this is like that other verb, and that other verb is often. As you get used to the different forms, they become second nature. I just think you have to memorize them at first. One thing I wanna say before I skip to me three hours from now having taken this written exam, is I think the one thing that would give me a significant leg up is vocabulary. And it's so funny I'm saying that. I recognize the past tense of things, whether things are happening ahead of time in the present. Ki, ki, sa, ten. Let me look that up. You know what, let me look that up right now, live. Coffee shop, that makes so much sense. I should have gotten the 10 part being shop, but I didn't. But I do think vocab would make or break, and I don't think there's purpose in grinding Boon Pro right now. I don't think it would make a significant leap. Okay, so here I am in my garage. The resolution's probably gonna be off. I don't know what's up with the, the computer here. I sat down in, in this in the little, little living room area here, and I was like, all right, it's time to take the test. Now, it's 10.20, no, it was, it was just before 10 when it started, it's 10.33. Half of these questions are repeats from the, the simulation. I didn't look up the right answer or anything after I did that simulation, so I'm more or less doing the same answers, and I found a few times that there's no benefit to like choosing the same one over choosing a different one or the other way around. You know, the best way to now use this would be wait a week, I guess, but done. I wanna plan my N4, N3 study grind. So, <laughs> duly noted that I guess the simulation, they just pulled questions from the official book, which I guess is fine. And as I mentioned in a, little, in a clip a second ago, there was, gonna, there was, it was highly unlikely that there would be a significant difference. The first time around 55, second time around 57%. Passing, so I guess I'm N5 now. And, I'll take that. I'll, I'll take that and I'll run with it. I've already written down some reflections. Just know, I did sit down to do this. Uh, I recorded my whole session, so if you think for some reason I cheated to get a 57%. Let me know, but the, the thing that really got me as I was going through the grammar was that the reading sections are the same. Like the whole coffee shop thing, it's all the same. So the simulation, I guess, was a not even shorter version of it. And it's just, I don't know, good to have. But a, a little disappointing. I have a book of three mock exams for the M4. So yeah, I'm gonna go plan that now because I like planning these things. Um, but 57% past the N5. And if you're curious about why I think I did that in three months, stay tuned because in about four seconds, I'm gonna tell you. That, that's it. Today's August 15th, 2022. I have written down a firm plan so that I can take the N3 on December 4th. And in fact, this morning I did sign up for the N3 on December 4th. My N4 is actually ahead of schedule as far as Boom Programmer goes, and vocab is going well. I feel very driven to complete these Japanese objectives. It's draining, it's a lot of hard work. It has been for this whole time, but I finished the end of the day with a sense of accomplishment. Here are the things I'm gonna do differently for the N3 exam. Reading to increase reading speed and recognition of grammar, especially that whole hiragana debacle that I alluded to throughout the video. More testing on grammar forms so I can reverse engineer words based on what form I'm given and knowing what tense and what aspect I will be working with given a verb. 
The most difficult thing for me is hearing and reading verbs or words with simplistic sounds and not being able to match the word one to one in time. I'm watching a lot more TV in Japanese, I'm listening to Japanese podcasts, I'm reading more Japanese, I'm making more of the media I consume Japanese. It takes no extra time in my day. Dedication is required for this, and consistency will get me far. I set myself a bar and I said, Take the M5 on the actual day it would be taken. If you still don't want to study Japanese, then quit. But make it at least this far so that you can say you did it. And I did it, and here we are, going for two more miles. Or a million, depending on how you see the JLPT. I rely on translating to English a lot right now, and I want to get rid of that instinct, eradicating what I call the middleman of translation. I will be combining consistent Wani Kani and the JLPT Anki. Right now I'm using Boonpro to complete the N5 uh, vocab list, 38 words a day. N4 and N3 will shift drastically, given that N3 is about double the words of N4. And I will be simply incorporating Japanese more into the day to day. On my morning walks, I'll listen to a Japanese podcast. Every other day, I'm reading a short story from my short stories book. And on the days I'm not, I'm working on the Totodora light novel. Getting used to Japanese is a part of my life. If I don't incorporate it into my life, what's the point of learning it? So, why'd I do this? I was doing the bare minimum of Japanese, just barely covering Wanikani, for about eight months. And I really don't consider that eight months to have had much progress. But I told myself, study for the N5. Even if you don't feel like you want to, do it anyway. And when you get to that point, when you get to July 3rd and you take the exam, whether you pass or fail, if you decide you no longer like Japanese, or if you really didn't like learning Japanese, then quit. But do yourself a favor and get as far as N5. So that's what I did. And now I'm going on to N3. <laughs> Whatever you take away from this video, whether it be a plan to learn Japanese or a little bit of inspiration or motivation, great. But the one thing I ask is that you don't chalk what I've done up to talent or to linguistic ability that is inherent within me. I studied linguistics, so that served as a great foundation. I had that extra eight to nine months of bare minimum Wani Kani, and I taught myself to read and write in the span of about three weeks, uh, just over a year ago. But I've also logged all of the time I have spent on Japanese, which you can see here. I logged the hours of Wanikani, Boompro, miscellaneous TV shows. What you don't see here are also the countless hours I have listened to Japanese music. If I can find a Spotify metric, here you go. I have not counted the fact that I have my phone in Japanese and when I use Google Maps, I will still keep it in Japanese. But put in the time, because people don't show that. The amount of time and not suffering, but the amount of dedication that went into this. I put in time, I was focused, and I was dedicated. And honestly, that's all it really takes.